let's use a few oblique feedback paths to make a nice thick gong sound using DXG and QPOS. Actually, before we get into it, I'd like to note that I usually come up with the patches for this channel by following various threads or ideas and seeing where they take me. And oftentimes it's not until after I've gotten wherever that is that I can look back and see clearly the best way to present them conceptually in the form of a video. When I get to that point, typically I then break down the patch and rebuild it, removing anything extraneous from the patch and deciding on a logical path through the patch that can make it intelligible to the viewer and listener. It means coming up with an overarching concept to tie it together, as well as presenting a linear series of connections and settings that make the patch seem to grow in what we think of as a natural fashion from simpler to more complex. But of course the true nature of patch creation does not necessarily always grow in that fashion. It's much more likely to take an unpredictable multivalent path with starts, stops, dead ends, and unexpected generative moments. There's no way to know whether we will end up with something that we deem worthy of tying up into a tidy conceptual package, whether that means building a whole composition from it, or even just giving it a name so it can be explained in a video. After all, we use processes of logic to understand the world as it's already given. Because of this, it's easy to delude ourselves that logic has a monopoly on truth. I try to take care that the act of constructing a logical explanation does not supplant the pre-logical connections that created the truth we've set out to explain in the first place. So, where did this Mobius gong patch come from? Well, it's a multivalent story with starts, stops, dead ends, and unexpected generative moments. First, I was trying to make a video in actually the opposite way from the way I'm describing. I started from a phrase, bells and whistles, that sounded like it would make a great title. Also, it seemed like it'd be a perfect patch for spectra noise, using the spectrophones chaos mode for bells and noise mode for whistles. I made a patch, and I liked it. but it got a little too complicated for me to come up with a good way to describe it, on top of which the light kept changing color while I was filming. So it was a good patch, but you'll never see it on YouTube. Next I thought, you know who made some great whistles with a synthesizer? Tomita. I listened to a bunch of his records, found his whistle patch transcribed in the Alan Strange book, now reissued in beautiful hardcover, and patched it up myself. And, to be honest, I was not all that happy with the result. It sounded good, but it did not sound like Palmita, at least not to the standard that I would want if presenting this patch in a video. Maybe I was having an off day. Maybe I was using the wrong filter slopes. Who knows? Anyway, that one will also have to wait for a different time. Then, one day, a friend casually asked me if I had a favorite small system. I didn't think hard before answering that I love the tape and micro sound music machine. And I also love, of course, what we call the big three, the zero code, zero control, Stregon. No, they said. The small analog voice that would fit in less than a skiff. So together we came up with this, the stereo analog voice. 
pulled the modules from one of the 7Us I've been shooting videos with, and now I've got it installed very snugly in a 4MS Pod 64. Snugly? Snuggly. Is that snuggly or snuggly? Well, what sounds does it make? <laughs> What did I expect, my great-granddaddy's monosynth? Okay, so, what's in the case? Stereo prismatic oscillator. That'll be the core of our voice. X-Pan, for mixing and panning. Richter Wogglebug, the only dedicated modulation source in the case. In my first attempt at this system, I made it without any modulation sources, since the idea was just a voice, but finally I decided that even the smallest system needs an id monster. Dual stereo gate. This will give us animation and additional mixing capabilities. Quad peak animation system for carving and resonating timbres. So in the end, it's just five modules, all analog. I'm going to control and sequence it with the zero control, also analog. Now, before you ask, yes, I gave this a name, Stereo Analog Voice. No, it's not a system that we're selling as a unit. It's just a selection of modules I pulled for this patch challenge. And but so here's something else I thought about. What happens if we create a feedback loop through resonant filtering of a transient created from a low frequency signal? Something like the car plus rings we've done with Mimeophone in a couple recent videos, but using nothing more than a QPOS and a feedback path. Specifically, let's patch this triangle wave from the XPO to the channel two inputs of DXG. We'll take channel two's outputs, send them into the QPOS, and then we'll wrap the high pass outputs back into the DXG's aux inputs so that the filtered sound is mixed in with the original. We'll strike this channel with the woggle bug burst out. Tame that uh, to some degree by clocking Wogglebug with zero controls clock output and uh, turning up the Woggle size. And we'll use the zero control strength CV output to modulate the internal clock rate of the, clo of the Wogglebug. The burst output is affected by the relation of the internal and external clock of the woggle bug, as well as the relation between the stepped random output and the woggle CV that attempts to chase or catch up to it. Additionally, I'm now passing, patching the low pass output of the QPOS into the woggle bug's influence input. This will use the output of QPOS to affect the random gate burst that feeds sound into the QPOS. So it's not direct feedback of the audio path, but it is creating a synchronous system in which the parts are affecting each other in a Mobius sort of manner. One thing I like about this sound is that we keep the thump of the original low frequency sound while also hearing the excitation of the upper harmonics from the high pass filter. In fact, once I patched it up, I decided that adding uh, an additional explicit audio feedback path wasn't necessary. That said, 
Why stop there? Let's modulate the QPOS frequency subtly with the right bandpass output to give it a little more bite. You've likely noticed by now that this is a favorite QPOS trick of mine. We'll take the left bandpass output and use it to FM the XPO. And we'll use the Woggle CV to set the FM depth. Again, Woggle CV is being influenced by the output of the QPOS. So I think we have three different paths that could be considered feedback of some sort. None of which are standard audio feedback paths. The QPOS influences the Woggle Bug, which modulates the FM on the XPO. which is our sound source. And also the striking of the DXG, which decides when we hear it. Both these things then affect what's coming out of the QPOS, and thus how it will circuitously modulate itself. Additionally, it's modulating itself directly with the band pass to the frequency input. Now, I know you're waiting on the edge of your seat for the end of my story. To me, this patch that I built from the idea of a couple of oblique feedback paths could be much more easily summed up as a gong-like sound. And somewhere in the thicket of building it, that started to work its way into my mind. And I started to make choices that would reinforce its gong-like qualities. And then sooner or later, I ended up with the patch that you hear before you right now. Then, as usual, I wrote the patch in a more logical order than the way that it actually came together the first time. Of course, our YouTube channel has hundreds of videos, over 500 of them at last count, and that's a lot of patches. I did a search to see if I'd ever done a gong patch before, and sure enough, strange patching. Cupas gong from February of 2019. Just over five years ago, and that patch was built from an example in the Alan Strange book. Does it sound like this gong? I listen to it and I have to say that it does not. And conceptually, the patches are very different from each other. I'm not sure you could even call both by the same name, but maybe you disagree. I'm gonna leave a link to that older video right here for you to check out and let me know, which one do you like better? Which is more like a gong? Does it matter? Also, do you want to hear that Tomita whistle patch if I can ever figure it out well enough? Let us know what you think about all this in the comments. Thanks for watching, and happy patching.